Continuing in the unit of medicine and drugs, we'll be taking a look at antivirals. The objectives of the screencast are to state how viruses differ from bacteria. You should also be able to describe the different ways in which antiviral drugs work and to discuss the difficulties associated with solving the AIDS problem in specific. Okay, so what is a virus? Well, a virus is an acellular parasite. It only contains DNA or RNA, and it, that is encased in protein. So, and this is important to note, unlike bacteria, it has no cell wall, it has no cytoplasm, it has no nucleus, there is no cellular structure at all. Um, you can list these separately if you're asked to list two, one to two ways in which a virus is different than a bacteria. Okay, so here is an example of the flu virus and the herpes virus. Um, okay, so you've got the uh, flu virus, herpes virus. You can see the uh, lipid protein envelope, the capsid, that's the capsid of the protein, and then your double strand of the DNA. Notice the absence of anything that would um, resemble a um, like cell, like nucleus, cytoplasm, cell wall. So, other differences between virus and bacteria. Virus has no metabolic functions. It cannot reproduce on its own. But they do, however, uh, multiply much faster than bacteria. They, they do this by basically um, invading a cell. and then they, they basically hijack them to reproduce. Let's hijack. Okay. So antivirus is much smaller than a bacteria. You want to know at least three of these differences between a virus and a bacteria. So hopefully it's obvious that the uh, strategies in treating a viral infection are going to be different than for a bacteria um, because um, viruses, they mutate quickly again. They are much simpler than bacteria, so there's less things to attack on them. Um, and all bacteria have similar processes. So they can all be targeted kind of with the same drug. Uh, one drug can be used for many different bacteria, um, while each virus has to be specifically targeted because you're really you're going after the DNA of that virus um, or the RNA of that virus. So to better come up with a strategy of how to treat a viral infection, you have to determine how specifically a virus reproduces. Um, and there are some steps to know. The virus binds to the surface of the cell, and then it is engulfed by a small portion of that cell membrane, and it is released inside the cell. That's where that protein capsid is removed. The viral DNA polymerase helps the virus reproduce and then the cell bursts and it releases the virus into the rest of the body for this cycle to continue. Spell continues correctly. Okay. So the main ways to attack a virus are to attack the binding of that virus to the surface of the cell, attack how that DNA is replicated, or to uh, affect the way the virus is released to the rest of the body. The IB tends to focus on these uh, ways to attack a virus. There is another um, strategy, and that is to come up with a vaccine. 
And a vaccine is a substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies in the body, and that allows the body to defend itself. Obviously, a vaccine is given as a preventative measure against a virus. This just doesn't seem to be highlighted by the IB, but it is pretty important. So, antiviral development strategies. One is to change the cell membrane, and that's going to interfere with the entry of the virus into the cell. One example is amantadine. Um, this is the structure. Pretty cool looking um, drug antiviral. Um, this binds to the cell. And by doing so, it prevents the virus from binding. The other is to alter the viral DNA during the replication process. And there are um, different drugs, and the example used is for hepatitis B. Here is the um, drug that is used. It is a, basically they call it a nucleoside. Okay, viral DNA just doesn't work properly anymore once it has interacted with these uh, medications. And then the other last strategy is to prevent viral replication by interfering with the enzymes in the cell. And this prevents the release of the virus from the cell after it has replicated. Um, couldn't find any examples of this one. So, moving into the discussion on AIDS. Specifically, what is AIDS? Well, AIDS is... Um, a synonym for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. It is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus, also known as HIV. And basically, this, this causes a failure of the immune system. Okay, once that failure of the immune system happens, then that allows other illnesses to attack the patient. These illnesses are things like um, cancer or pneumonia. And it's actually these other illnesses that end up um, killing the patient. Okay, so how does HIV um, work? Well, HIV is spread through the exchange of certain bodily fluids. These include blood, semen, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. That HIV virus affects the CD4 plus T cells. These are also known as the white blood cells. The NR RNA from HIV is then used to synthesize viral DNA using the enzyme reverse transcriptase. transcriptase. That viral DNA is then incorporated in the cell's own DNA. Those viral particles are produced in the host cell, and that then those are released when that cell dies. It is a retrovirus, and that means that its genetic material is the RNA. There's an extra step in there. Okay. You don't really need to know this process, but it does help in understanding how it is treated. Probably should have said that in the beginning, sorry. So, continuing, HIV destroys those T cells, and these are the precise cells that are needed to defend the body against viruses. Okay, so remember, when you attack the immune system, that gives other diseases a chance to get a foothold, and it's those other diseases that actually kill the patient. The other problem with HIV is it mutates very quickly, even within one patient. 
The HIV mutates as much as the flu virus does within the flu season, and this is just within one patient. And this is difficult, and, and in targeting HIV, it's really difficult to do that without harming the host cell. Um, HIV itself harms the host cell, so um, it's tough to just target that HIV. So those are some difficulties in treating HIV. In addition, the IB focuses on some socio-cultural issues with the um, AIDS and HIV. Okay, and you need to kind of explain these in a little bit more detail. I'm going to list these and kind of talk about them. Um, there are cultural factors involved with HIV and AIDS. And the first one is, is really ignorance. And, and when this virus first came out and was, um, I guess, being noticed, um, there was a lot of questions as to the populations that were being um, impacted. Um, in Africa, it's about a third of the population. Um, it was drug users. There was sometimes a idea that these people brought it upon themselves. That's just, it's ridiculous for that type of idea to be out there. Um, there was a lot of misinformation about what caused it. Uh, there was the idea that you could get it from just kissing. Uh, they weren't sure exactly how it was spread in the beginning. Uh, is it like a common cold? Um, then there's the social stigma. Um, you know, once you're diagnosed with HIV because of the misinformation and the, the ignorance on how it was spread, uh, there was a social stigma. And that social stigma, again, was, was primarily the uh, drug-using population and also the, the gay and lesbian population. <coughs> once it was found out, Really, the method in which uh, HIV was spread, um, condom use. There are certain cultural resistances, depending on some religions, and some cultures don't put the responsibility uh, on the man for contraceptive use. And depending on where you are located um, around the world, there's availability and perhaps a cost issue with condom use. There's also this notion that illegal activities can spread HIV, which is true. Uh, drug use with sharing of needles and prostitution with the, the bodily fluids being the um, mode of spreading the disease. And again, that um, ignorant belief that these people uh, or those populations brought that on themselves. And then, of course, there's medical factors. The cost of medicines is sometimes prohibitive, and the availability of medical resources, particularly like in the sub-Sahara in Africa, just getting the medical resources to that area um, is, is difficult. <coughs> and then you also have the devastation of family life. You have a lack of resources to assist families that are impacted by HIV and AIDS, and then you have um, orphans of a mother and a father if they both have AIDS and die because of that. Um, the extended family of those orphans may be reluctant to take them in due to the significant health costs of somebody with HIV or AIDS. And that ends the screencast for antivirals.